So about your, your first question about the, uh, the impact of this particular um, uh, of, of this particular infringement on uh, the management of uh, the floods in Greece. This is not. Uh, this is rather a counterfactual question. I would not be able to really uh, give an assessment of what would have happened if this infringement hasn't been uh, hadn't been uh, there. Uh, of course, the objective of uh, this uh, piece of EU legislation is to ensure that there is uh, good uh, preparedness for uh, for any flood risks. That is also why the Commission is um, uh, treating any infringements to this directive uh, very very seriously. Uh, however, of course, I, I cannot I cannot speculate on what would have happened if if these infringement hadn't been there. Um, now, I am also not at liberty to disclose the. Um, content of exchanges that we have with member states when it comes to uh, infringement proceedings. What matters for us is, uh, in the end, the, the outcome and the fact that the infringement is still ongoing, and this is why the Commission is taking, um, is taking these steps. And when it comes to your last question, uh, there is indeed the question of the, f the, the maps and the plans that are required under the directive. And uh, if you look carefully at the press material that we published about the infringement cycle, you will see that there is, we have taken steps both when it comes to the maps and the plans. These two procedures are on different stages because the legal obligations fall under uh, on different timelines. However, we are looking at, at both and we are taking uh, steps in the infringement proceedings on both of these. Many thanks, Adelbert. Other questions on this infringement case uh, specifically? 